What's going on everybody and welcome back to Johnny K Picks and in this video I'll be going over my full card picks and predictions along with the bets that I'm looking at so far for UFC Abu Dhabi Sanhagen versus Nurmagomedov. Now first things first please hit that like button for me subscribe if you're new or if you just haven't yet turn on those notifications so you know when my videos come out when we do our live shows all that good stuff. And leave some comments below how well you did at UFC 304, what what fights you're looking forward to for this one, and any bets that you're looking at. Um, also, uh, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Johnny K Picks. I, do my, I give out my early picks, my early bets throughout the week. I have UFC, UFC cheat sheets that I give out to everybody as well. It's $5.99 a month to become a core member. I also give out free content so you can join for free as well. So definitely check that out. But yeah, last night was uh, UFC 304. Let's quickly go over that. And um, yeah, it was a, honestly, it was an up and down card for me, just for pure fan entertainment. Um, Shauna Bannon gets it done by split decision from um, Alice. Very close fight. Um, I did not think Bannon won 30-27, I'll tell you that. But I do think it could have went either way, 29-28. Um, I thought Alice you know, maybe could have won rounds one and two. I definitely thought Bannon won round three, but either way, not the greatest of fights, but it was the one to kick off the night. Uh, Mick Parkin got that KO in the first round with against Bretsky. Very good um, fight for him, and very his boxing looked very crisp, and um, yeah, he's not that bad, actually, for a a lower tier heavyweight when i i know if you watched my li the live shows before when i say lower tier heavyweight there's only two tiers in the heavyweight division you're either the upper tier or you're the lower tier i don't think mick parkin is the upper tier the top eight guys i think but um he could be a top 15 guy for sure but we'll see what happens with him if he keeps improving i like where I, what i see with him though probably the easiest bet of the card was sam patterson getting that submission against crosby i had that as a bet and that was basically free money because crosby literally gave him the head and arm choke and right off the bat once sam took him down and got into full mount it was just bam 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 thank you ma'am so good win from P uh, patterson i want to see him against someone Way better than Crosby because Crosby's not UFC level, but he did what he needed to do. Uh, pretty fun fight, actually. M uh, Modestus versus Marson. Um, actually, you know, Modestus got the third round submission. It kind of reminded me of when uh, Victor Petrino got that third round submission against, I think it was Prashnio, actually. Um, it was fun. They were going back and forth, trading blows, and then all of a sudden, Modestus, like, I can get this fight to the mat. And he did a lot, had a lot of success and uh, got the submission late. So good win from him. Uh, very, very, very good outing from Oben Elliott. I had a Preston Parsons bet, and I was actually pretty confident that Parsons would win. Parsons could not get that wrestling going, which that's how he, what he needed to do to win that fight, and he could not get any wrestling going. Oben was able to stuff all those, all the takedowns, basically. I think he actually did all of them. And was able to outstrike Parsons and win a decision. So good win from Oban. Uh, looked like he is improving. So that is something to note going into the future. But um, Preston just needs to get that wrestling going or else he's not going to win a lot of fights. Let's put it that way. Um, snoozer of the night was uh, Micaiah versus uh, Cape or Cop. Um, yeah, they they tried to sell this fight all week and it did not entertain at all uh makayev i guess one he had a blatant uh shorts grab of manel didn't get a point deducted which is outrageously crazy to me there was tons of fence grabbing <laughs> last night speaking of that and no points were ever taken um looked like manel broke his toe in the fight it was just a weird fight um yeah you can probably give it to muhammad he probably won but like it wasn't it was one of those fights again where he he kind of scrapes by and he barely gets it done um dana did not like that it looks like he might be headed for the pfl so we'll see what happens with that but uh yeah snoozer fight um yeah jake hadley got it done against uh lafren um hadley does have good boxing and good striking and Lafren was not able to get the takedowns, which that's what he needed to do. He had an awful game plan. He didn't even try to go for a takedown until I think either late in the first or even into the second round. And Hadley always gets taken down in against flyweights. 
So I don't understand how Lofren wasn't able to when he was the bigger, stronger guy. He was trying to strike with the the quicker, probably better boxer. And it just doesn't make sense to me. But good win from Hadley. He got it done. And uh, it, was a, it was a good showing from him. Speaking of good showings, Bruno Brazil versus Molly McCann. Bruno Brazil, fighting nerds, leveled up. 100%. Best I've ever seen Bruno look. Um, Molly did not have, had no answer for anything that Bruno was giving her. Um, won, a, won a clear decision. Potentially could have got the finish if she would have kept going at it a little bit more with the body early on because Molly was dropped a couple times, but very good win from Brazil. Oh, this fight enraged me because I had the late round props for Wood, but Nathaniel Wood versus Daniel Pineda uh, would look great, but man, those fight IQ, his fight IQ is not great. Not great at all. Um, he had Pineda dead to rights with his eye, with the body shots, and he what did he do? He just kept going down, getting taken down. Didn't, you know, it was okay with a decision win. Ugh, it was awful. I, <laughs> I'm a little salty still about this one, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I don't want to say it was a bad performance from Wood because he did have some good moments, but he could have made it look superb if he would have finished off what he started. Arnold Allen versus Giga. Giga looked good in the first round, but Arnold Allen was able to keep the pressure going, kind of wear down on Giga because Giga was going backwards the whole fight. Arnold Allen won 29-28. Didn't, att didn't really attempt any takedowns, which it was kind of weird to me. I thought he would try to go for some wrestling, and I thought he'd have a big advantage with that, but he decided that he was going to keep the pressure and keep Giga going backwards, and it was one of those fights. So I think Arnold Allen won 29-28. was pretty clear. Fun fight here. Gregory Rodriguez versus Christian Leroy Duncan. Uh, Robocop looked like he's getting better and better as well. Um, we know his style. He can brawl. He can grapple. He, uh, I wouldn't say his striking is the most technical, but he's got power. And it looked like early on, Duncan did not like that power he was receiving. He got had like a big welt on the side of his head after the first round. He was, he was getting taken down at will. And... Um, very good win from Rodriguez. I wish I would have bet Rodriguez instead of Manel, but it is what it is, and uh, we move on. But that was a very impressive win from him, even though it was a decision. I liked what I saw. Um, Patty Pimblett versus Bobby Green. Bobby Green made one of the biggest mistakes I think he's ever done in the UFC, other than maybe getting um, KO'd by Jalen Turner. Let's put it that way. But I don't know why Bobby Green would ever shoot a takedown on Patty Pimblett. Why? He, he was the better striker uh, on the feet, and he was going to be. Patty did not look like he wanted to strike with him at all. And then Patty was like, oh, you're going to shoot a takedown? Cool. I'll accept that and then get you in a triangle joke. And it is what it is. Good, But good win from Patty. He took what Bobby gave him, which was very low fight IQ. So another good win from Patty. Got the submission. Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. I mean, that's Tom Aspinall for you under, you know, in one minute, under under two and a half minutes, get that finish. Dude's powerful. Dude's explosive. He goes for it. And um, if he lands, he lands. I mean, starting to, some people are debating that it was an early stoppage. I think it was fine, personally. Um, was it the best stoppage? No. But I think if the ref would have let it go on for another five or six seconds, it would. Curtis wasn't getting up. He didn't look like he wanted to either. So um, good win from Tom. I mean, I think he should be the the legit, you know, undisputed heavyweight champion right now. But it is what it is. And we'll see what happens with that. And we have Bilal Muhammad gets the belt from Leon Edwards. Very good performance from Bilal. I'm not going to take anything away from him at all. But what I will say is this. Leon Edwards did not have a good performance. He looked awful. Like, um. I've seen him look way better than this, and he was not moving at all with his footwork or circling the cage. He was like a sitting duck up against the cage. Blal just needed to shoot, and whenever he had the opportunity, and he got a takedown every freaking time. And Leon just did too little, too late every round when he reversed Blal with like 30 seconds left, and he did nothing every freaking time. But um, hey, like I said, not taking anything away from Blal. Blal. Did, had a great game plan. He does Bilal things. But Leon, I don't know what was that. It, he looked like he was almost sleeping out there, like he didn't want to be in there. And um, it was just a weird weird, weird performance from him. But it is what it is. And Bilal is our new welterweight champion. And I want to see Shafkat versus Bilal.
I think it's time. I don't want to see Bilal versus Usman. I don't want to see Bilal versus Colby. Those guys can fight Leon or JDM or Ian Gary. Let those guys fight those guys. But I want Shafkat versus Bilal. I think that'll be a fun fight. But that was UFC 304. Let's go to my picks and bets. For my picks, I think I ended up going 8-6. and six, So not the greatest of picks. But for my bets... I ended up walking away with 0.61 units this time. Um, again, not the greatest reads. I had some good ones, some bad ones. Obviously, the Manel, Preston, Parsons bets weren't great. Um, Edwards to win in round four or five were decision. I mean, again, I, I knew it was going to go longer in the fight. I just picked the wrong fighter. And then, you know, Nathaniel Wood not getting that finish in rounds two or three really makes me mad but like i said patterson by submission was probably the freest bet of 304 park and allen parlay great parlay that was my first bet of the card um Ardeline, Ardeline, i think that's how you say it. i know it's something different and then P patty pimblet plus three and a half spread parlay that hit pretty easily um and then i had a time prop parlay that hit pretty easily too so um yeah not the greatest of nights but it's a winning card i think that's I think it's like eight of nine I've hit. I've won some money on at least. And I think I've won the last six cards too. So um, we're going to try to get a little bit back on track, get at least three or four units for this one coming up. Um, also too, more importantly, for the um, Defend Your Units live show bet, we hit the easy money parlay yet again. That's six weeks in a row, guys. Six weeks in a row we've hit this easy money parlay. So. If you haven't watched us defend your units on Wednesday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern time, definitely come out, hang out with us. We'll talk fights, and we're going to give you our easy money parlay. That's hit six weeks in a row. Um, the beer money parlay, not the greatest. I mean, it's hit once, so it's paid for it over, I think, I want to say like 15 times already. So I think we've only hit one out of like six or seven, maybe eight. So, but that still, if you hit that and we're, and we always try to get it above plus 1000. So, you know, it is what it is, but this is the, this is the parlay right here. The easy money parlay six weeks in a row. Let's go. All right. Enough blab babbling here. UFC Abu Dhabi. We have 13 fights. One was dropped off and I think it was recently. What was it? The Vicente Luque and Nick Diaz fight. That was it. But let's go down. Start with number one. Cedric Dumas versus Dennis Tululian. And um, Dumas is an aggressive striker. He's got power in his hands. He's got good straights down the middle. He can be a little hittable. He can wrestle and grapple if need be. Does have a sneaky guillotine. Um, is he the greatest? No, but he's not awful. And I know the last fight might have been a little bit weird because it might have been a little eye poke from Ruzi Boev, but he ended up getting a finish there. I know a lot of people were mad about that, but um, Tululian, you know, he's a basically a striker. He's got decent boxing and decent power. He does not have a ground game. His takedown defense is not good at all. He can be hittable on the feet. And um, yeah, I, I got to go with Dumas for sure, because I do think he can take this fight to the mat if if the striking isn't working for whatever reason. And he's going to have a lot of it, um, a lot of success, I should say, on the mat. He can stay on top of him. Dennis cannot get up, and he might be able to get a submission too. So um, Dumas here all day for me. I do think he gets a finish, whether it's going to be by knockout or by submission. I would probably just go with the sub, but it wouldn't shock me one bit either if this fight goes to decision because because uh, lay and pray and Dumas Dumas's cardio isn't all that great, so he does slow down a little bit. But Dennis slow down slows down just as much. So Dumas, I'm gonna say by finish. Um, I'll say submission if I had to choose, just because I think the advantage on the ground is way wider than on the feet, and maybe it'll be something like a club and sub too. So I'll say finish second round or submission in the second round but i would just look at maybe dumas inside the distance see what that's going to be when those props come out next one's gonna be jai herbert versus rolando uh, bedoya and uh jai herbert we haven't seen him in a while i think it's about a year but yep a year 
Uh, but he's a very good technical striker. He does have good power in his hands, good kicks. Um, he has shown a little bit of wrestling. He can um, get some takedowns if need be. He's pretty decent in the clinch and up against the cage. Uh, he's very long and tall, but he's not going to have the craziest advantage here and there or for this fight. But one thing with him, though, is his chin can, is a little suspect. He can get rocked and dropped. He can be winning around until, and then he gets dropped and he'll lose it right away. But um, yeah, this is going to be at lightweight too. So um, I know Bedoya has fought at welterweight recently, but I think he's moving. Yeah, this is going to be, he's moving down first fight in the UFC at lightweight, but he's a very good striker. He's got good boxing. He's a high volume guy, always throws combos. One, two, one, two, um, three, four combos. Striking defense, you know, a little concerning. He can be a little hittable, though, but he is very durable. He does have pretty good cardio, too. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting fight. Um, the lines, you know, I think they are appropriate, and it wouldn't shock me one bit if Bedoya wins this fight. I do think this fight could go to decision. Um, but I'm going to pick Herbert. I'm not very confident. I like his experience. I think he can mix in some wrestling if need be. And I do think he's the cleaner striker, technically, but I do think Bedoya has more volume. So that's what's worrying for me with this pick. Um, obviously, he's 36 years old as well, too. So still going to go with him, though. I'm going to go with the experience. But again, I'm not super confident in this one. I would stay away from a betting perspective. I don't like any angle at all. Maybe if you want to do Bedoya plus three and a half spread. I think that's actually a pretty solid look. So when that comes out, look at that bet. And um, that's the only thing I would maybe even think about. Uh, next one we got here is going to be Victoria Dudakova versus Sam Hughes. I know a lot of people are, are going to be on Sam Hughes because she has a little fan base. But Dudakova, well-rounded fighter. She's got pretty decent takedowns. Striking is okay. She likes to push forward. She's got very good submissions off her back and uh, pretty good cardio. She won her last fight against Jin Yu Frey, but that was a little questionable, if you ask me. Um, if I remember correctly, maybe not. No, maybe she won that fight pretty clearly. I don't remember. Either way. Um, Sam Hughes, though, she's very tough. She's a pretty. Her striking is decent. It's not great. She got very good cardio, though. She can wrestle and grapple. She showed some, showed some good top control when she gets the fights. Um, when she gets the fights to the mat, she gets hittable on the feet, though. And if she and she can be taken down too. Her takedown defense isn't all that great. Um, but yeah, this is another fight where I'm probably gonna stay away from. Again, this could be another spot where you can look at Sam Hughes plus three and a half too. Um, because I do think she can win one round just by getting a takedown and and staying in control. I don't think Victoria will be able to win all three rounds or get a finish, but um I'm going to go with Victoria. I just think she's going to do a little bit more on the feet. And I think she's the more dangerous fighter, but Sam Hughes is very tough. Like I said, and she's very, and she does have good cardio. So she can maybe win the later round in round three, but I think in the early goings, I think Victoria should be able to bank up bank uh, two rounds for sure. And win the de a decision, but it wouldn't shock me one bit. If maybe Victoria wraps up like some kind of weird, you know, uh, submission, Sam Hughes has been finished twice, but um, I'm going to I'm going to say decision, though. This is going to be one of those fights where it might be a little boring. You can look at the overs in this fight as well. Sam Hughes isn't a finisher, really. And um, yeah, the overs, Sam Hughes plus three and a half. I would do I wouldn't touch Victoria with on that line right there. I think it's a little wide. Uh, next one we got it's going to be Guram Kutaladze versus Jordan Vucinic. And Kutalatze is a very good technical kickboxer. He's very strong, good kicks. He's got solid wrestling and takedowns. Um, his takedown defense is pretty good, too. Um, he doesn't really have the greatest striking defense, though. He kind of keeps his head stationary a little bit. Um, we have seen him slow down a little bit as the fights go on, especially in the third round. Um, he did lose to Elvis Brenner in the third round, um, but... You know, he kind of, I think he took that fight on short notice too. So I'll give him a little bit of a pass on that, but because Brenner is pretty, he's a dog, let's put it that way. But um, yeah, Vucinich though, he's taking this fight on short notice, UFC debut. He's well-rounded. He's super tough. He's got good cardio, um, good power in his hands. His uh, 
like good wrestling, good grappling. Like he's a well, a super well-rounded. Um, and he's actually a pretty decent fighter, but you know, he is, like I said, he's taking this fight on short notice against Guram, who's very solid. And I think he's going to get this one done. Um, the line isn't too bad, but what will worry me though, would be round three. If this fight gets into it and, um, Jordan, I, I believe has never been finished. Yeah. He's never been finished in his career. So I do think this fight's going to be able to go all three rounds uh, maybe you can look at the over, but um, I'm going to go with Guram to get the decision win. And uh, yeah, we'll see what, what happens with the line, but probably not touching. Eh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe the over one and a half is good for super safe parlay. Next one, it's going to be Shamil Gaziev versus D1, Dante Mays. Gaziev, very powerful striker. He's very dangerous early. He can wrestle if need be, but he's more so a striker. He's very tough. He's very durable, but his cardio can be a little bit of an issue. As we saw in his last fight, um, he looked very good in the first round, and then he kind of slowed down, and he I don't want to say he gave up, but it says retirement on there in, a, in the fourth round against um, Rosenstruck. So, that was his first fight. I believe most of his fights have not gone over one and a half rounds. So that was one of his first few fights where he was over one and a half rounds. So maybe he just didn't have the cardio and stuff like that. But this is a three round fight. And Dante Mays, D1, if you want to call him by his nickname. Okay, striker. He's very low volume. He does have good power in his hands, though, if he does land. Um, he can wrestle, but his takedowns aren't the greatest. I mean, he's durable. He's going to stay in there. He's, but um, yeah, he's just not great every, at anywhere. But he's going to, he's serviceable. He did win against Kyle Machado. He was landing the better shots. I think um, he even might he hurt Kyle a couple times. But um, yeah, this is completely different from uh, Kyle Machado here. I'm going with Shamil. I think he's the more dangerous striker. Obviously, I think he can do some damage early if this fight does get to round three. Maybe Shamil, you know, slows down a little bit, but I just don't think Mays is going to be able to take over the fight at all. He's going to have to land something pretty significant early to stun Godziev because I can see Godziev getting a finish early or winning rounds one and two and then basically surviving because I don't think Mays is going to be able to finish Godziev at all. So unless he lands like a, a huge overhand right and just puts him out, but I don't think that's going to happen. So give me Godziev to win. I'm going to say... First or second round knockout. I think he get, he's going to get this one done. Sorry, D1. I know you're my guy, but it's what it is. Just business. Just business. Uh, next one is going to be Muhammad Yaya versus, I'm going to say this wrong, Kyle Fernandez. And Yaya, he's, a, he's an okay striker. He's very low volume. He does push forward a little bit. But like I said, he's low volume and doesn't really make sense. Good power. He doesn't really wrestle. He's very hittable on the feet, and um, he's very tough. He's very tough. His cardio is a little bit, you know, it slows down a little bit as the fight goes on, though, but he's very tough. He's going to stay in there. Fernandez, solid striker, good power in his hands. He does have good grappling and good takedown defense. He does have good combos. I like his combos, when it, um, good counters as well. He had a good fight against Mark Diakadze, um, went to split. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go with Fernandez. I just don't think Yaya is... I don't want to, I don't think he's all that great. Let's put it that way. I think he's serviceable, but I think Fernandez is the better striker. I think if this fight does get to the mat, I think he's going to be better on the mat. And um, yeah, I, I think me and Yaya can catch him maybe, but I don't think so personally. Um, Fernandez has never been finished. I know he's lost twice, but um, I got to go with Fernandez here. I think this is pretty cut and dry. Uh, Yaya did not impress me against Trevor Peak, even though Trevor Peak did not get the finish. But that was a wild and crazy fight. And like I said, Yaya is very durable. And um, that's what I will give him. He's very good at. So maybe you can look at the overs in this one as well. Because like I said, both guys are durable. I think it might be a, one of those slower paced fights. But um, Fernandez, by decision, is going to be the play for me. Yep. Next one Alonzo Menafield versus Azamat. Mirzik, Mirzik, Mirzikhanov. 
Ooh, a little tongue twister today here. Still early. Uh, Menafield, powerful striker. He's not very technical, though. He can wrestle. Does have pretty good takedowns. Uh, good takedown defense as well. He can be a little bit low volume at times. Um, he can have a little bit of <laughs> crazy fight IQ moments against um, Carlos Olberg, where he just ran in and got clipped. I don't understand why he did that, but maybe he was trying something different. Clearly didn't work out for him. But he's a very solid fighter, though. As a Matt, though, solid striker as well. He's got good power in his hands. He's very explosive. Um, he does slow down as the fights go on, but he does have a little bit of wrestling in his back pocket, too, that he can use. And, yeah, this is basically going to be explosive versus explosive. I think um, as a Matt might have the more dynamic striking, and I think Menafield might have the more powerful power in his hands if he lands. Um, by dynamic, I mean like Azamat can, you know, land a flying knee or a spinning back kick or something like that. Like Alonzo's not going to do that. He's going he's to try to knock you out with his fist. So, uh, this is a close fight because I, I see just, I see a finish in this fight one way or another, but I'm going to go with Merz, Merz to win. It's probably going to be one of those boring, and I mean not boring, but it probably will go to decision because, you know, you're like, oh, there's going to be a finish in this fight. No, it's probably going to go to decision. But leaning Mer Merzikhanov, um, Alonzo's always going to be live for a KO, but I just think the more technical striker, a little bit more dynamic, can use some more kicks, um, if need be, can mix in some wrestling. I think his takedown defense is pretty solid too, so... Give me Merzikhan off to win. I'll say by decision, but it, it, hey, don't take that for what it's worth. I just it's a gut feeling going with the gut, but I do think Azamat wins. Main card now. We got Joel Alvarez versus Elvis Brenner. This is going to be a very fun fight for however long it lasts because I do think there will be a finish in this one. Um, Alvarez is a very good grappler. He's got very good submissions, very good off his back. He does accept takedowns because he doesn't mind playing off his back. Like I said, good striking, um, good leg kicks. He does have good power, good elbows. His takedown, uh, like I said, his takedown defense isn't great, but that's because he kind of accepts it. He doesn't mind be playing off his back, but um, he doesn't. He's a very good hammer. He's not the greatest nail. So if some guy is going to be landing on him, he kind of shies away after that. But unlucky for him, he's fighting Elvis Brenner, who is a very good hammer. And uh, he's well-rounded. He uh, always pushes forward. He's got good power. Um, he's very durable, good grappling, good submissions. He's uh, pretty decent cardio as well. But this is going to be a good fight. But I'm just going to go with the bigger dog, no pun intended, because he is the underdog. I do think he's the better, bigger dog as well. And Elvis Brenner. Um, I think if this fight does go to the map, I don't think he's going to get submitted. I think he can stay on top and be uh, safe. It's an easy path to victory for him. And on the feet, you know, I mean, he's going to, Joel's going to give Elvis some problems just because he's going to be what five inches taller, five inches of reach. But I'm telling you, if Elvis does get this fight to the mat and works his grappling, I think he's going to be safe enough. I think he can get some elbows going. We saw uh, Armin able to do some good ground and pound on Joel. And we haven't seen uh, Joel in about a year against uh, Mark Diacasey. So, more active fighter, obviously. I mean, he's fought three times before Joel, approximately. So, give me the give me the underdog dog in Elvis Brenner. I like his style. I think he can get this one done. I think he can be the bully in this fight. And Alvarez doesn't like it. He likes to be the bully. But if someone's going to bully him, that's when he kind of shies away. And I think he can get, he's very hittable on the feet, too. So. Elvis by, I'm going to say knockout. Maybe second or third round knockout. I can see that. Next one's going to be Mackenzie Dern versus Lupe Godinez. Interesting fight. I like the mac matchmaking in this one, but we all know who Mackenzie Dern is. Very good grappler, very good submissions. Her takedowns are improving. I will say she's able to get some takedowns in her last few fights. Um, her striking seems like it's taking a step back. She was improving her striking, but now I feel like it's taking a step back. Um, but she is very durable. She does have good cardio. She's going to let go all three rounds. But um, 
has, you know, maybe some interesting fight IQ moments as well. But Godinez, she's very well-rounded. I think she's got very good boxing. Uh, she trains with, you know, Diego Lopez and Alexa Grasso and those guys, uh, Alessand- Alessandro Costa, too. So she got very good boxing, very good wrestling. Um, her grappling is pretty good, too. I think she can um, stay safe in this fight. Uh, she's probably going to want to keep it on the feet, which I don't blame her one bit because I do think she's going to be the better striker, more technical. Um, she does have pretty good takedown defense. So, again, I think she can stuff Mackenzie Dern's takedowns. But the thing with her, man, is like you can see you see the path to victory. You could see her win any fight. But then she goes out there and her game plan is completely different. And you're like, what are you doing? Why aren't you shooting takedowns? Why are you shooting takedowns? Like you shouldn't be doing this, but you're doing it. Um, but we've seen some great performances from her too. So it's like, she's a, she's a mixed bag. You don't know what loopy you're going to get, but again, I'm going to go with loopy. I'm riding one, one more time. I said, I never would. I said, I never would in her last fight against Verna. Cause I did pick her to win. Uh, but Verna, as you, you know, maybe Verna is leveling up. So give me loopy. It's going to be a very close decision. I guarantee this is going to be a close decision. Um, but on the feet, I like Loopy more. I think she's going to land the better shots. Just Loopy needs to stuff those takedowns and not get any uh, dangerous grappling positions for Mackenzie Dern to get the submission. And I think she'll win. So Loopy is the pick. Loopy by decision. Round three decision, whatever. But she is the underdog. So I don't mind taking a shot on the underdog with Loopy. Uh, next one, the old man fight of the night, Tony Ferguson versus Michael Chiesa. And yeah, we all know who both these guys are. Ferguson, he's, you know, five losses in a row. I think it might be six if if you want to go back, but I'm not going to, you know, he's an unorthodox striker. He's still pretty durable. He's been getting cracked a lot more. He's 40 years old. Um, you know, he's, Takedown defense isn't that great. He does have good grappling. Um, always going to be live for a KO with the spinning elbows. Very good elbows. But, man, oh, I don't know why he's fighting, personally. Uh, but luckily for him, he's fighting Michael Chiesa, who, again, I don't know why he's fighting. He's lost three in a row. I don't think he's been performing all that well. But he's a good grappler, good wrestler. He's got good submissions. He can be submitted um very easily i will say but his striking is just okay um you know he's not very active he fights like once every year you know he's at the he's at the ufc desk talking about fights he's been submitted five times out of his um six losses and uh like i said turning we'll look at tony ferguson's loss one two three four five six seven in a row uh, do I go with Tony Ferguson to break the seven loss streak or do I go with Michael Chiesa to, I don't know, win a decision? This fight, I don't like. I'm not betting this fight whatsoever, but if you're going to bet it, bet the dog. Plus 320 on Tony Ferguson, why not? But for my pick, I'm going to go with Michael Chiesa. I, I can't trust Tony Ferguson at this point, even against Michael Chiesa, which is that sounds rough. But um, I wouldn't shock me if Tony Ferguson wraps up like a like a darts choke on Michael Chiesa when he shoots in for a takedown. Um, that's why this fight's so crazy. But give me Michael Chiesa to win. I'll say by decision because Tony's pretty tough. I mean, he almost made it to decision with Bobby Green. He looked pretty decent. This fight was a joke. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Michael Chiesa by decision. I'm not touching that fight with a 10 foot pole but here's a very good fight chito vera versus davison figueredo and we all know both these guys vera, vera solid striker he's got good power in his hands he can be a little low volume he can be a little hittable as well but he never wears any damage except in his last fight he wore some damage against sean o'malley which that's like one of the first um times i've seen him wear damage but that knee that he took was insane i don't know how he took that knee but Anyways, he is very durable, like I said. Always pushes forward. He gets stronger as the fight goes on, but this is a three-round fight, so this isn't his in his wheelhouse. And um, good cardio, good grappling, but his takedown defense isn't the greatest. And Figgy, 
solid striker. He's got good power. He, I know he's moved up to Bantamweight. He's looked very good in his last two fights against two very good people. He's showing off more of his grappling re- recently, which I do like. He's got good submissions. He can slow down a little bit as fight goes on, but um, I'll I'll be honest with you. He's looked he looked Bantamweight might be his jam because I think his cardio is better and his power is translating as well. Um, so this is going to be a fun fight. I, but again, I don't like fading Cheeto, but I like Figgy here in this matchup. I think this is a, I think this is a good matchup for Figgy. I think he can use that, the wrestling and grappling, and that's a huge advantage here. Stay on top. And, um, you know, Vera's doesn't really work to get himself up all that much. He likes to play off his back a little bit. He's got good submissions off his back. But Figgy's better. Like, he's not going to get submitted like that. And on the feet, I mean, it's close. But again, I just think Vera's a little too low volume. I think he, you know, he's, he had a good run. And now he's starting to fight the top level guys. And you, you kind of see the uh, the holes in Vera's game. And Figgy is an ex flyweight champion. And he's looking really good in the Bantamweight division. So I'm, ro- I'm rolling with Figgy here. I'm rolling with the with the momentum that he has. And I think he gets this one done by decision. Vera is very, Vera is very uh, tough to finish. Very tough to finish. So you can look at the overs. I think that's a very good uh, play. I think Figgy's line is pretty appropriate as well. Um, But yeah, I like Figgy a lot in this matchup for sure. And we got the co-main event of Shara Magomedov versus um, Mikhail or Michelle. Ola Zaychuk and Magomedov, very good striker. He has a good power in his hands, good kicks. He's got pretty okay takedown defense, but luckily for him, I don't think Ola Zaychuk is going to shoot any takedowns. And um, yeah, he's just a finisher. I mean, he didn't, did he get the finish in the last fight? Yeah, I know this last fight against um, Antonio Tricoli wasn't the greatest of looks, but Antonio is a grappler more so, and he's got good grappling. And he tried to grapple Magomedov. He had a good game plan. He just couldn't execute it because it was on short notice. But um, speaking of short notice, I think Ola Zaychuk's taking this fight on somewhat short notice. But he's a very good boxer. He's got good power. Always pushes forward. He works the body with good combos. He's, I want to say he's pretty durable. But man, he's been getting subbed pretty with ease and finish. You know, he's got finished in his last three losses, mainly by sub. But um, we've seen um, Michelle. Where is it? Michelle was able to land a good body kick on him and basically froze him up. And he and Michelle was able to get a club and sub. So that was really more so a, a, a knockout. But um, I got to go with Magomedov here. Uh, I can't trust Olaze Chuck in his career at the moment. You know, he's been training with supposedly his friends and not like really good training partners. And we don't know where he's at with that. He just fought about a month ago two two months ago. It'll be probably um, didn't look all that great against Kevin Holland. I'll tell you that. And I think Magomedov is a better striker than Kevin Holland. So I think Magomedov's going to get this one done by finish, probably first or second round. I'll say knockout. Um, but yeah, pretty confident in this one. I just don't think Olaze Chuck, you know, he's fight he's fighting all these pretty tough fight, fighters, to be honest. So um going with Magomed, I'll buy the finish first or second round. I'll say knockout, like I said. And the main event, Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Yurmagomedov. Pretty interesting fight. Um, funny thing is, I was supposed to see this fight in UFC Nashville, and that's when Umar got hurt. And then Corey got hurt in that fight against Rob Font. Weird, weird, weird. But Sanhagen's a very good technical striker. He has good elbows, good flying knees. Um, He stays at range very well. He does throw a lot of volume. He can be a little hittable at times, but uh, he's got good grappling. He's durable. His takedown defense isn't, you know, it's pretty good. He's got very good cardio, like I said. Uh, Nurmagomedov is very well-rounded, very good striking. He's got very good wrestling and very good grappling. Once he gets you down, you're not getting back up. Um, he's, I would say he's more so dangerous on the mat, mat, even though he's, he does have very good striking with his kicks and he's durable. He's, he's has very good striking defense 
Um, very good game plans, good cardio as well. Um, yeah, this is going to be Umar's biggest test as of yet. But again, Umar is very good. And I think he gets us one done. Um, don't mind anybody taking Corey at plus 200 because, again, Corey is very good. Um, but I just think Umar is at least as good as Corey, but I do think he's better. I think Umar will work the grappling. I think he can stay on top. And uh, we've seen Corey, I don't want to say get dominated, but get controlled on the mat against uh, Algio, I believe. And I think Nurmagomedov is, you know, I don't want to say he's as good or like Algio, but I think on the mat, though, it's probably pretty close. And uh, Umar's very, very good. He keeps you down there. You're not getting back up. And I think it's basically, if he gets you down, he's going to win that round. So five rounds, I think he can win three. I'm going to say this fight goes to decision, but it wouldn't shock me if Umar wraps up like a rear naked choke somehow, if he takes the back um, on the feet, though. You know, I think I don't think there's going to be a finish on the feet by either guy. It'd be more so Umar's submission, but I like the overs in this fight, too. Um Umar by decisions to play for me. It is what it is. But that is it. Ladies and gentlemen, there's all 13 fights for UFC Abu Dhabi. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Please hit the like button on your way out. And don't forget, Wednesday night, defend your units where we put out the easy money parlay for seven weeks in a row coming up. So definitely want to check that out. Like I said, Wednesday night, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I'll have another special guest on. So definitely tune in for that. And yeah, that's all I got for you. So check out the Patreon, hit the like button, subscribe, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Until next time, happy fight night.